from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, May the 19th, 2017. U.S. President Donald Trump embarked today on his first trip abroad as president, including a few-day stop in Saudi Arabia, then Israel, the Vatican, and Belgium. Air Force One will touch down at Ben Gurion Airport on Monday, May the 22nd, at around 12.15 local time. The president will be greeted with an official ceremony and then head to Jerusalem, where he will meet with Israeli President Reuven Rivlin, and then head to the King David Hotel, where he will meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. That will be followed by a dinner with Netanyahu at his residence. Tuesday morning, Trump will go to Bethlehem to meet with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas and then return to Jerusalem, where he is set to visit the Old City, including a stop at the Western Wall, making him the first sitting U.S. president to visit the Holy Site. That afternoon, Trump will lay a wreath at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum and deliver a speech from the Israel Museum before he leaves Israel at around 4 p.m. local time for Italy, where he is scheduled to meet with the Pope at the Vatican. Israeli security forces are in full gear for the president's visit with extensive preparations and increased presence. Monday's arrival will make President Trump the sixth U.S. president to visit the Jewish state. The first was Richard Nixon, followed by Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush and Barack Obama. The U.S. House of Representatives approved a bill this week that would help in the reporting on anti-Semitism in Europe. The Combating European Anti-Semitism Act of 2017 passed unanimously on Wednesday. The Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism explained that the bill would require the U.S. government and encourage our global partners to continue to take a hard look at anti-Semitism in Europe, provide a thorough assessment of trends, and outline what the United States and our partners are doing to meet this challenge. The task force is co-chaired by Republican Ileana Ross Lettinen of Florida and Democrat Nita Lowy of New York. The bill now heads to the Senate. Two recent anti-Semitic incidents to report to you about in Ukraine. According to the Euro-Asian Jewish Congress, two swastikas were discovered painted on the front door of a synagogue in the city of Chernivtsi, which is about 250 miles southwest of Kiev. And in a separate incident this week in the nearby town of Storozhinets, the headstone of a prominent rabbi was smashed. Police were investigating both incidents, and the European Jewish Cemeteries Foundation, which is based in Germany, announced today that they would be rededicating four Jewish cemeteries in that part of Ukraine to help protect such burial sites. Romania's parliament approved legislation to help Holocaust survivors in the country. Beneficiaries who will now receive financial support from the Romanian government include those deported to ghettos or concentration camps, survivors of death camps and forced labor camps, as well as those forcefully removed from their homes. Lawmaker Silviu Vexler, who represents the Federation of the Jewish Communities in Romania, said this law is a symbolic gesture to further recognize the terrifying suffering of people who have been through the darkest of moments. A U.S. federal court in Brooklyn dismissed a case against Facebook, which claims the social media giant provides a platform for Palestinian terror and incitement. Shirat Hadin, the Israel Law Center, represented the plaintiffs in the lawsuit, which is combined with a damages case against terror group Hamas. The plaintiffs include the families of five victims of terror in Israel, including U.S. Army veteran Taylor Force, who was murdered in a terrorist attack in March of 2016 in Jaffa. Shirat Hadin director Nitsana Darshan Leitner said the court dismissed the case on the grounds of immunity according to the U.S. Communications Decency Act, but that her group would appeal. She said the district court simply ignored the claim that Facebook is liable for providing material support to designated terrorist groups when it allows Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS and the PLO to utilize its social media pages. American rock band Aerosmith kicked off their world tour in Tel Aviv this week. The veteran rockers from Boston took to the stage at the city's Park Hayarkon Wednesday night. It was their first time in Israel since 1994. Yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hosted the band at his residence in Jerusalem. 
And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, May the 19th, live Shabbat services are coming up at 7 o'clock from New York City's Central Synagogue, followed by performances from the Krakow Festival. At 8, comedian Judy Gold speaks at the 92nd Street Y, and at 9, it's the film Mama Drama, with Musica featuring Israeli singer Carolina at 10.30. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 5.30, Rabbi Shlomo Riskin looks at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, May the 19th, 2017. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom.